I'm Rebecca Cohen, and I'm also known as Rebecca Story Weaver because for the last 25 years I've practiced the art of traditional storytelling. Now, storytelling can be done many ways. It can be done with film, as it is here. It can be done with the written word. It can be done with art of all types. But the kind of storytelling I do is the oldest and simplest of all. It is simply the storyteller, the story, and the listener. The story that I'm going to share with you today has its roots far back in the pale, that part of Russia, Poland, Ukraine, where the Jewish diaspora left the Yiddish people and their stories come from there. It's known by as the tailor, or sometimes it's known as just enough. My version, however, is called Grandma's Sweater. My Grandma Alice was born in 1879, the seventh child of a ranching family in the Sierra, Sierra Nevada foothills of Northern California, a family that knew that work was life and life was work, and you never wasted anything. Why, and they knew that their work began before can see in the morning and lasted till after can't see at night. And even then, their hands were busy, um, all except for the one who was reading to the rest of them. And by the time my grandma Alice was five years old, she was taking bits and pieces of leftover yarn from her mama and her sister's possibles bag and making pot holders. And she kept knitting and soon became well known for the beautiful garments she made, especially her sweaters. In high school, she won Grand Champion Purple Ribbons for her sweaters at the Grand County Fair. And when she and my grandpa David married their children, who started coming along immediately, they were never cold. They always had a warm sweater to wear. Now, my mother, also called Alice, was Grandma Alice's seventh child. And when Mama graduated from high school and was going off to teacher's college, my Grandma Alice gifted her with a beautiful dark blue cable knit sweater. It was to be the last sweater Grandma Alice ever made because arthritis stole the work and the life from her hands. Oh, my mama, she loved that sweater. She wore that sweater in crisp fall afternoons at football games, and she pulled that sweater close around her when she was studying in that unheated third floor dorm room. Maybe she had that sweater on when she met my dad. I don't know. But I do know that after they were married and the baby started coming, that sweater was the first thing Mama reached for every morning before she went out to milk the cows and gather the eggs from the chickens. And when it seemed that there was war on the horizon, my parents decided that there would be more opportunity here in Oregon. And so they moved to Eugene, where they landed in a unheated one-room shack on five acres outside of Eugene. And I know that when my mama got up in the morning in that cold, wet Oregon winter, that sweater was the first thing she reached for. Until one day, she started to put that sweater on and she looked at it and she said, oh my, look at this old sweater. It's getting so shabby. I, I shouldn't be seen in a sweater like this. I'm just gonna throw it away. But Oh, I hate to waste anything. You know, I believe there's enough good wool left in this sweater to make something someday. So she proceeded to unravel that sweater and splice the broken bits, roll it into a big ball of blue wool and tucked it into her possible's bag. Now the war years came and during World War II, there wasn't much of anything for the folks that were fighting from the home front. And there especially wasn't, wasn't material for new clothes when somebody was starting first grade. So when my oldest sister, Davy Ann, got ready to start school, Mama reached into her possible's bag and brought out that bowl, ball of blue wool. And she made Davy Ann a little dark blue cable knit sweater. Davy Ann wore that her first day of school. And Karen Lee wore that sweater. Alice Brenda wore that sweater. Peter John, <laughs> he wasn't going to wear that sweater. Neither was Paul David, but 
Diana Lee, and she, she didn't live long enough to wear that sweater. But when I came along, I wore that sweater. I wore that sweater out. I was that kind of a kid. And one day as I was flying out through the back porch into the kitchen, my mama grabbed me and said, Rebecca Jane, look at that sweater you have on. It is embarrassing that a child of mine should be dressed so shabbily. Here, give me that sweater. I'm going to throw it away. But I do hate to waste anything. You know, I believe there's enough good wool left in this sweater for something. And so my mama, she unraveled that sweater and spliced the broken bits and rolled it into a little ball of blue yarn and tucked it back in her possible's bag. And there it stayed as the years passed, as years do. And the time came when I was pregnant with my first child. And at my baby shower, there was a little flat package. And when I opened it up, oh, inside was a little tiny dark blue cable knit sweater. <gasps> Oh, my, my firstborn, Jed Michael, he wore that sweater. His brother, Devin Abraham, wore that sweater. Passed it on to his cousin, Kent David. And Kent David's little brother, Paul Davis, he wore that sweater. And passed it on to another cousin, Jarrett Michael. And by the time it got back to me, oh, that sweater was shot. Oh, five boys, it was time to throw that thing away. But oh, I hate to waste anything. I looked it over and I thought, well, there's just enough wool left in this for something someday. So I proceeded to unravel that little sweater and splice the broken bits, rolled it into a little ball and tucked it back in my possible's bag. And there it stayed. The years passed, as years do. Time came, I found out I was going to be a grandma. Oh, I reached in that bag for that little ball of blue wool and well, there wasn't enough for a sweater, but there was enough for a hat. And so Caleb Abraham, he wore that hat, and Riley William wore that hat. Tanner w David is wearing that hat right now. And I had just this little piece of wool left over after making that hat. And I thought, well, I'll throw this away, but ooh, I hate to waste anything. You know, I believe that there's just enough wool left here for a story. <laughs>